Hey hey and welcome back to my channel. I thought this video could be quite a fun one because I have a few questions I always wanted to ask Swedish people so maybe you will be able to answer my questions. Of course I will also share my own thoughts about these questions and why I'm even asking them and if the responses are quite plenty and quite good then I obviously will make a video with your answers as well very soon. Before I start with my first question, let me quickly tell you who I am and why you might like to be here and maybe even subscribe to my channel. So I'm Yuli, I'm originally from Germany, but in the last 10 years I lived in the UK, in London with my British partner and my daughter, she's three years old. So yeah, basically we are a British German family and we moved to Sweden just outside of Stockholm seven and a half months ago. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about Sweden if you're very interested in what it is like to live in Sweden or to move to Sweden as a foreigner, then I share my personal experience, the ups and downs. So feel free to follow my journey. So let's start with the first question. Why do you use this cheese cutter? I don't know if you're Swedish, you probably know it. If you are not from Sweden, you won't know it. But yeah, this is a cheese cutter. I actually don't know the Swedish word for it but it's very, very Swedish. So obviously you can see we have one, but I'm still not sure why you really use this one because you could just use a knife to cut the cheese. So I was wondering, is it because you want it really thin, the slices of cheese or, you know, I have no idea. I mean, we have one because my partner really likes it. I use it as well, but you know, I could alternatively use a knife. So I'm very, very interested to know why you use a cheese cutter. Who invented the cheese cutter? Obviously, leave your comments, your answers down below in the comments section. So we already come to the second question. And that is, why do you, Swedish people, think that Sweden is perceived as not so social? So quite preserved, you know, it's really hard to make friends. So that's really my question. Why do you think is that and is that even true? I already told you that I follow these kind of Facebook groups. A lot of them are, you know, by international peoples from all over the world, sometimes also from the UK and Germany. But what they all have in common is that many say that the Swedes are not so social. So that's why I wanted to ask this question. What do you think is happening? <laughs> Why do you think the world has such a perception of you? For me, I am still not sure if that's really true. I only live here seven and a half months. It's still a pandemic, so it's hard to make really a judgment about it. I do have some Swedish friends, but I met them before and I met them in another country, in London, UK to be precisely. So it's hard to really say if that's true. Then I'm also German. I feel like the Germans might be more similar to Swedish people than maybe other nations. So maybe it's not me who has a problem with that, but I also think it takes time and effort. I really don't expect people to actually come to me and make friends with me. So maybe it's an attitude thing, but yeah, of course it depends from which country you come. So maybe you're used to something else and that's maybe why people sometimes think Swedish people are not so social. I don't know, you tell me. But I have kind of a B question to that question because this is something I really heard. And that question is basically, why do you not want to talk to your neighbors? So I kind of heard from others and there's also, I think, a joke about it that Swedes wait until someone passes by um, at their doorstep because they don't really want to talk to the neighbor. So I find that quite funny and I was wondering, you know, coming maybe from a personal experience or personal opinion from your side, why do you not want to talk to your neighbors? Why do you want to avoid them? I mean, in general, I can just think about when you leave the house, maybe you're late or you just don't have time to do some small talk. So that's why you maybe try to avoid to bump into anyone who can, you know, steal your time. Or if I'm obviously in a grumpy mood, I can also imagine you don't want to really talk to neighbors, but I don't think that everyone is so grumpy that you never want to talk to your neighbors. So what is that about? Ooh, and something I have never really thought about, but I'm quite curious about this, is what do you think about your neighboring countries, so your neighbors? 
So I'm talking more about the Finnish people, Norwegian, but also the Danish people. Because I started to hear some things that certain neighbors are not so much like, some are okay with, and then sometimes you obviously get like comments maybe from someone who's from Denmark or Norway, and you know, they say maybe they're better or this is better in their country. <laughs> I mean, of course, there's always a little bit of rivalry between countries, but I'm just curious, who do you like, who do you not like and why? I mean, in comparison, there's for example, Germany and Austria, they like to be compared or compare each other or something. What I know is that Germans don't really mind the Austrians, but Austrians kind of don't like the Germans. And I know that actually also from my own experience because I used to live in Vienna for about four years when I studied there at the University of Vienna. And you would not believe what kind of comments I got, you know, from Austrians. I mean, they were not aggressive or, you know, there was not super hatred against me as a German. But you just like could feel that they're not so much into Germans, you know, with like the little comments they made and the questions they asked sometimes in clubs, you know, I used to be young when I lived in Vienna. Um, it was really weird and I really didn't think about that before I moved to Austria that this could happen. But yeah, there is um, something going on there. Some people said it's because Austria is smaller and they feel smaller or something like that once germany is in the middle of europe and talked about much more i don't know if that's the reason but you know it's such a political thing and so on the surface like does it is it really enough to not like the germans in general i don't know but yeah then i also have the opposite example where a friend of mine married an austrian guy and also lives in austria and obviously she's quite happy there so it's not that in general every german can't live there you know and, and doesn't like living amongst the austrians or the austrians are peeking on the germans all the time so of course it's not the case either okay let me ask another question could you live without fika i don't know i just wanted to ask you this because obviously fika is so famous for sweden i kind of knew about it or maybe heard about it before i moved to sweden probably from my swedish friends but now I live here, it's such a thing, and I've been talking about it. And I was just wondering, like, what do you love about Fika? You know, why do you have it pretty much every day? I mean, I do like to have coffee and some sweet treats and meeting up with friends. Um, definitely, this is something I approve, absolutely. But yeah, I'm just very curious why you love it so much. and. You know, maybe you can even tell me a little bit about the history of Fika here in Sweden. Oh, and then I have a very personal question. What is it about the Swedish mindset and exercising? I mean, I mentioned this already in a few videos, I believe, but yeah, I'm quite stunned by how much the Swedish people exercise or do some kind of sports or activity. And I'm just wondering, you know, do you grow up with this mindset from small on your parents, you know, go out or show you going for a walk? I can understand, you know, that, but I feel like he is even a bit of a religion. It's very important to Swedish people. And yeah, I just want to understand where that comes from and how you grew up. And maybe you can shed a little bit of light behind why Swedish people are quite fit. Of course, I'm also wondering, like, you know, everyone knows the benefits of exercising and maybe everyone is so well educated about it, what it does to your body and maybe you want to live longer or something like that is like the education of exercising, what actually motivates Swedish people. I don't know, you tell me. I have another question about an item you might be familiar with. So this is a butter knife. Again, I actually don't know what it is called in Swedish, but yeah, it's a kind of shaped knife, but a wooden one. And my question is, why do you use this to spread butter on a bread and not a normal knife again? It's quite similar to the cheese cutter. And again, we have one, obviously, because my partner loves it. I barely use it because I always have a knife when I do some bread and I use my knife. So please tell me, is there a traditional or a highly benefit using a wooden knife to spread butter on your bread? 
That is my next question. Okay, and let me ask you my last question to you. I hope you are still watching so you can answer that question as well. I wanted to know when someone moves to Sweden, what would be the first thing you want them to know about your country, about Sweden? Should they know something about the Swedish culture or Swedish traditions or any rules you expect? or, you know, attitudes Swedish people have towards something specific. What is it, what you would tell me when I'm first moved here and in my first video, you know, what would you have told me about Sweden the first time we kind of met? I think this is just really cool to know because that's definitely something I can make a video out of it as well. So for people who want to come to Sweden or move to Sweden, you know, just a little tip or a little insight from Swedish people about Sweden. I'm quite curious to hear what your responses are. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'm really excited about your answers and I will definitely respond to every single one of you who leaves a comment. I hope you enjoyed this video and I of course also hope that I will see you in my next video. Until then, have a great day and stay safe. Hey, though. Thank you.